we're going to talk about fermenting today. Fermented February is going on again. Our friend Anna at the Fermented Homestead invited us along. This is the third year that we're doing this or that at least we are participating in this. And what I really like about it is that there's a lot of different recipes shared from a lot of different people. Um, that have been doing fermenting for years and then some who have just started experimenting with it. So the, the month really is about sharing videos, sharing recipes, sharing ideas and learning from each other. I live in a pine needle forest that has some oak trees on it as well. So I have pine needles everywhere and they're evergreen. So. They are all the time, everywhere, and you can use them whenever. My pigs think they're gonna get a snack, but so the closest pine tree I have is right here. It's hanging out with the pigs. It's a small one, so I can reach the branches. I don't have to cut the tree down to get the pine needles, and they're readily available all year long. I made a video a couple of months ago, maybe a year or two ago, that I can link below about all the benefits of pines and pine needles. And what we're gonna do with the pine needle soda is we're going to ferment these pine needles, which re will result in a little bubble in the soda. And if you've ever tried pine needles or pine needle tea, it's super citrusy. It has a lot of antioxidants with it. And we're gonna pick some needles, wash them and ferment them for our pine needle soda. The great thing about fermenting foods is that you don't need a lot of specialty tools. Some bowls and your hands will be just fine to do what you need to do to massage your vegetables and extract some fluids and then let them sit and let nature do its thing. For our pine needles, we are using wild fermentation, which basically means we're capturing what's already on the product, on the pine needle, um, which is basically wild yeast. We're adding some sugar to add some food for that yeast, some water, and then nature does its thing. Again, we're just packing it, we're adding water and sugar, and then we're letting it sit. So fermentation is really a nice and lazy way for me to preserve food and make some exciting experiments with new stuff. Fermenting foods has been around for a very long time. Not only does it help us making foods more shelf stable or shelf stable for a longer amount of time, it also brings a lot of health benefits with it through the fermentation process, making foods more palatable and making nutrients more available to us as they're moving through our body. Overall, all you're going to need for this is a flip top bottle, fresh pine needles, water and sugar. That's it. So the fermentation is going to be sugar based and it's going to start eating away and building up those bubbles. It'll take about two weeks or so for the soda to hopefully be done. Y'all get along. Be nice. Anyway, it's going to be amazing and I'm really looking forward to it. We've washed them, we've dried them, and now we're gonna clean them and put them in the bottle. And then all we need to do is add some sugar, some water, and let it sit and let nature do its job. So we want to cut off this little wooden piece back here. And we'll just use kitchen scissors, that's it. Off into the bottle we go. I wish y'all could smell this. All right. 
we're gonna add four tablespoons of sugar. And then we're gonna fill it up with filtered water, bottled water. In my case, it's well water. And shake it up really good. And then we wait. We're about a week in with our pine needle soda and it's bubbling really nice. I've got it sitting at a windowsill so that it can um, sit in the sun as much as possible or in light as much as possible. I've done some reading and there's been some research done in regards to Ayurvedic medicine that sun charged water is, is even better for you which is basically a bottle of water that's sitting in the sun and soaking up the vitamin d and the sun rays so we'll see we're gonna try it out and we've got it sitting in the window now and it's bubbling really good and um, we're gonna do a quick burp and show you how that looks like so you see We've got some tiny little bubbles right there. And that's what we want to see. We want to see Mother Nature work in her magic and turning sugars and starches into, oh, <gasps> look at that. That is gorgeous. And this is why you don't want to screw a ferment shut because it can explode on you. Now, it's been three weeks for this, these pine needles to sit. Now you see they've lost a bunch of color. And if you're looking super close, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, 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 I don't know. Oh yeah, there you go. You see a little bit of fluff in there on the needles, which that is the natural yeast that we're pulling out of it, um, which helps with the fermentation and the oxidation. So I'm not going to move it because I don't want it to go nuts. <laughs> Let's see. <Ooh! laughs> Look at that. That's amazing. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Ah, bring a towel. <laughs> okay. That is awesome. <laughs> Power of fermentation, I guess. That is awesome. All right, let's see how this is going to taste. All right, I think we're about done. Exploding. Ah! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Okay, there we go. All right, okay, cool. <laughs> Look at that. Heck yes. Boop, boop. Beautiful. All right, it smells good. All right, taste test, Amber. Ready? Don't drink the needle, just have a sip. It's not bad. Tastes familiar. Tastes pretty good. I like it. I don't know if I want as much sugar maybe next time. I might add, I might add some citric acid to this like some lemon juice or something. I think that will make it better. But it's pretty good. 
Yeah, maybe a little more lemon next time. Prost! <laughs>